Hello everybody, it's me Faith. In this video, I want to discuss a plant called Impella. I know this plant is Impella, but it is also commonly known as Ikokela. The plant's common name Impella is a Zulu word derived from another Zulu word called Ngempela, which means for real or definitely. I assume this name comes from the fact that this plant has so many medicinal properties that it will definitely treat just about any ailment. Impella is scientifically known as Justicia flava. The genus gets its name Justicia from a Scottish writer and horticulturist James Justice. The species name flava is Latin for yellow or golden, referencing the color of the plant's flowers. Impella is a plant that grows up to a height of about 45 centimeters to 1 meter, depending on the area where it is growing. It is a pioneer plant, hence it tends to grow in disturbed environments. It is native to the tropical and southern parts of Africa. It can also be found growing in Saudi Arabia, where it is declared as an endangered medicinal plant. Impella can be established on just about any type of soil and prefers to be planted under the full sun. The plant is shade tolerant, but it grows better under partial shade than under full shade. Impella has a number of medicinal properties. The plant has anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antioxidant and wound healing properties. It also has a compound called helioxanthin, which inhibits human hepatitis B viral replication. That is why it is often used to treat the hepatitis B virus. Impella also has another compound called porophyllotoxin, which is antimitotic. The word antimitotic is derived from the word antimitosis. Mitosis is similar to to meiosis. These two processes are both types of cell divisions which occur in the body. Meiosis is how the sperm and egg divide to form a baby. Mitosis is how old body cells form new body cells. So antimitotic properties prevent certain body cells from dividing and multiplying. And this is how you prevent diseases like tumor or cancer from forming in the body. Hence, impella has anti-tumor properties and it is used to treat cancer. Impella also has analgesic properties which make it good for treating dull pain. Lastly, impella has antipyretic properties which make it ideal for treating fever. This can be fever that is due to an infection or fever that's not from an infection. The most useful part of the impella plant are the leaves, roots, and seeds. In general, impella can be used for medicinal and culinary purposes. But different groups of people use impella for different reasons. In Kenya, impella contributes to sand binding vegetation in coastal dunes and sandy river banks. In Kenya, impella performs a function similar to some of the acacias in other parts of the world, including South Africa, for example, Omsasane, which is scientifically known as Acacia totilis, is used by most countries to stabilize the sand dunes. Sand is very light, and whenever there is rain or strong winds, the sand tends to erode away. So you cultivate plants like impella or umsasane to prevent sand erosion and to stabilize the sand dunes. If you didn't know, South Africa introduced acacia species from Australia in 1845 to try and stabilize the sand dunes in the Western Cape. And some of the acacias that were introduced ended up becoming invasive. An example of such a plant is Acacia menziae, which is considered as a major invasive plant. Invasive plants are plants that grow uncontrollably and take up the soil's resources, making it difficult for indigenous plants to grow properly. 
The best way to understand alien invasive plants is to look at the relationship dynamics between the citizens of a country and foreigners that come to live in that country. If there are no laws or if the laws are there but are not properly enforced, which govern how foreigners enter a particular country, how they live in that country, the things they can do while living in that country, etc., if these laws are not in place or enforced, you end up with the same scenario that you get whenever you introduce alien invasive plants in a country. If you introduce alien plants into a country and you do not control the plants, the plants will spread like wildfire and use up most of the soil's resources like the water, the nutrients, the ground space, making it difficult for indigenous plants to compete. What I never understand is that officials know that this happens in the plant and animal kingdom and they put laws to protect indigenous plants and animals from alien invasive plants. But somehow with humans, the same logic seems to always fail. Maybe instead of introducing acacias, they should have thought about using indigenous plants such as impella to stabilize the sand dunes. So also in Kenya, the leaves of impella are burnt to ash to produce a type of vegetable salt. So I've never heard of something called vegetable salt, and I couldn't find a company in South Africa that makes vegetable salt. Or maybe there is one, they just call it by a different name. So I went on Google and searched for vegetable salt, and I found two companies that make and sell vegetable salt as a product. The first one is Health and Right in the UK, and the second one is Nostimini in Australia. However, when I checked how these two companies make vegetable salt, I found that it is very different from how the Kenyan people make the salt. So the two companies mix sea salt with dry vegetables that are crushed, while in Kenya they burn the vegetables and then use the ash as vegetable salt. Lastly, the people in Kenya use the leaves of impella to treat diarrhea. In Ghana, impella is used in traditional medicines to treat skin infections and disorders like wounds and yours. Yours is a skin and bone as well as joint infection caused by bacteria and when it's left untreated, yours can actually cause permanent disability to the person that's infected. To treat skin infections and disorders, fresh leaves are used to make a decoction and poultice. Poultice is an ointment or cream that is applied to treat wounds. Impella is also used to treat hemorrhoids and stomach disorders. To treat stomach disorders, the leaves are used to infuse tea. The leaves can also be crushed into powder and added to food. People in Ghana also make an infusion of impella with egg albumin. Egg albumin is that white part of an egg or it's called um, egg white. So they mix impella with egg albumin and coconut juice to treat heart palpitations. Impella is also used to treat coughs, fever, paralysis, epilepsy, convulsion, and spasm. Just like in Kenya, in Ghana, the roots and flowers of impella are also used to treat diarrhea in both children and adults. More specifically, the roots are used to treat diarrhea and the flowers are used to treat dysentery. This is bloody diarrhea. Lastly, Ghanaian people use the sap in the leaves of impella as an eye lotion. In Ivory Coast, impella is used to treat painful menstruation and to induce menstruation. In Cote d'Ivoire, impella is used to stop bleeding. For example, when you have a cut that's bleeding, you can use impella to stop the bleeding. And that's the reason why impella is used as a hemostatic. 
It is also used to treat menorrhagia. This is a heavy menstrual flow that usually lasts for more than seven days with severe cramps. It can also be used when you have blood in the sputum. The sputum is saliva mixed with mucus from the lungs due to an infection. Like in the Ivory Coast, Coq d'Ivoire uses impella to treat painful menstrual cycles and to induce menstruation when they have stopped. To treat painful menstrual cycles, Ghanaian people crush the leaves of impella and mix them with vegetable ash, the seeds of the aframamam species and the capsaicin pepper. And this mixture is then administered by enema. Lastly, in Cote d'Ivoire, people treat feverish pains in babies by pulping the leaves of impella and then rubbing them on the baby's skin. In Tanzania, impella leaves are used to make an emeritic to induce vomiting or ugupalaza. Also in Tanzania, the sap in the leaves of impella are used to treat hookworms, which is a parasitic infection, and to treat hydrocell. Hydrocell is a condition where the scrotum is swollen due to fluid accumulation in the sheet surrounding the testicle. The sap can be used in a number of ways to treat hookworms and hydrocell. One of the ways to use the sap is by bathing with it. And as seen with Kenyan people, the sap can also be used to make lotion that you can apply on the skin. Lastly, in Tanzania, the bitter roots are chewed by the Maasai people to treat diarrhea and coughs. In southern Nigeria, traditional healers use the leaves of impella to treat premature births and miscarriages. In Sudan, the seeds of impella are used to treat gum and teeth ailments, as well as nausea. The seeds are used in their powder form. To prepare the seeds, first dry them and then crush them into powder and smear the powder on the teeth and gums to treat teeth and gum related ailments. In Saudi Arabia, impella is used to treat cough, paralysis, fever, epilepsy, convulsion and spasm as well as skin infection disorder. The roots are also used in treating diarrhea. In Guinea, the leaves of impella are considered as good forage. The leaves are collected from the wild and cooked is vegetable to make soup or stew. In South Africa, impella is used to treat cough, stomach ache, headaches, menstrual disorders, diarrhea, as well as to stop bleeding. Lastly, in South Africa, but I've only seen this in case at end, but the leaves of impella are often used by business owners as a good luck charm to attract new customers and to retain old customers as well as to grow the business revenue. That's it for this very short video. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, stay blessed, and bye.